two songs for worship tonight. And then when I got here, I don't know, I was like, oh, I guess I'll pick a third. And that's why I just didn't do it, because I didn't feel like we were supposed to, so I was supposed to pick two from the beginning. So, um, so we're going to be switching it up a little for you on Thursday nights, bringing you a variety of fun. Everyone sounds so excited. Do we need to make this earlier? Will you all be more enthusiastic at 6.30 instead of 7.30? No. Um, so it just so happened that I was up, and um, my husband ended up having to go into work tonight. So it worked out OK. Um, so I just have um, you know, a little something. One of the things that I think is so important is um, you know, when, when God asks us to, whether it be speak to one person or 12 people or a thousand people, he wants us to be like him, which is real, right? So um, I, I think that's important because I, I know that um, through the years I've heard a lot of people talk and I appreciate the realness um, a little bit more than the extra fluffy kind of stuff sometimes. And it was funny because when I was putting this together, I probably had like four hours worth of stuff. So be ready. I hope you brought your blanket. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kidding. Um, I had so much. It was like I was in overload and I was like, okay, God, like this is good, but can we wean through some of this? Like we, we got to like zig and zag here a little bit. Um, and then it's so funny because, you know, um, the devil likes to chime in and you know I was in a good mood this week so he didn't win and um, you know he uh, it's funny because he's like well there's not that much scripture in that and you know so I kind of kicked him a few times in the head so we'll just mosey on here um, so I've had a weird kind of week um, I am an emotional person anyway <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know that and um, I had a lot of stuff going on, and it kind of figured because, well, I'm supposed to talk on Thursday, so. The funniest part, though, is that I didn't have to strive for anything. I think sometimes we put a little bit more pressure on us, like, we've got to do this. This has to be great. This has to be biblical. This has to be, you know. And, and so... It kind of hit me on Monday that um, I was driving to the hospital with a friend of mine to go see a friend of ours. And, you know, when, when people aren't well, when people are ill, and when you're going through things, it makes you think about things, right? And, um, you know, it makes you start thinking about, you know, what I coulda, shoulda, woulda done, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go down that pathway, but... Um, so went to see somebody in the hospital Monday night. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then Tuesday we had a funeral. Um, one of the um, girls that we met in the homeless shelter very many years ago, who we've known for quite a few years, um, very sad, um, not even 38 yet. So just an emotional kind of few days. And I just kept kind of mulling over everything and, and not trying to get in too deep and try to figure things out. So I think sometimes that's, I know when I get in trouble is when I want all the answers. Okay, oh, God, organize this in my head in alphabetical order by the longest sentence first or what, you know, like that, that organization that we sometimes feel like we have to have, we don't always have to have. It's not that there's chaos because we know he doesn't bring chaos, but sometimes we don't have to have all the answers. And we have to be okay with that, which kind of rots. But, And so, you know, just kind of mulling over things, spending a lot of time, um, you know, quiet time with him at night. Um, I'm thankful that I've had that this week. And um, so I know that some of you, most of you maybe, have heard at least bits and pieces of my testimony at some time or another. But I was raised Catholic, for anybody who doesn't know that. And um, many years went through Catholic school. Um, 
I was very involved with retreat teams and um, I did all the music for my high school and we had, used to have mass every month and all these things and so I was always very involved and I really if you know sometimes we talk about our childhood or you talk with classmates and they're like oh I regret all of this stuff I would have boy if I could go back I would change this this and this and I always had a different response and I actually started to psychoanalyze it a little bit too much where I was actually trying to figure out if my recollection my recollections were wrong like did I really not have a good I'm like no I had a good childhood like if I had to go back and do everything over I would do it all over again probably exactly the same even including making the same mistakes because that's kind of how I got here too but so um, you know always very kind of one thing that he brought to me this week centered around him you know um, whether it was with my family going to church or singing in the choir or um, teaching CCD or doing summer Bible camp with the kids or doing the retreats with the younger kids and it was always so centered and um, you know you get older and then you make mistakes and then shame and guilt kind of comes in and what does it do it separates us from him and I think one thing I realized this week was that I didn't know of course I wish I knew this then but I didn't know how to have a relationship with him after I made a lot of big mistakes in a row <laughs> you know I mean I made mistakes when I was a teenager you know I got in trouble for sneaking out at night, going to Almax to buy Pop-Tarts with my friend. I mean, I really wasn't a big troublemaker. I don't have really great stories to tell. My husband does, but I don't. And, um, but you know, things here and there, you know, stuff that, well, my mother won't hear this anyway, but you know, leaving school, having a half day and then, you know, going and ordering pizza and maybe having a beer and being like this is disgusting how do you people drink this and that was the end of that um, but you know nothing crazy so when I did when I got pregnant with Maggie it was like I fell off a roof it, it's really like the only way I can explain it and you know so the shame came in the guilt came in but also the fact that I felt like I let everyone down okay um, you know, I was the only daughter, I was the oldest of four, I was the only granddaughter for a long time, um, you know, captain of every team, MVP of everything, all stay, every, I mean, graduated second in my class. So there weren't a lot of, play and I needed to fall, I think, I did. The problem was I didn't know how to have a relationship af with him after that because I was so hidden in shame and guilt that I couldn't, allow him to reach me so not that I went off this crazy path and you know or anything like that but every decision that I made after that was based on shame and guilt so um, and I won't get into that but it took a very long time for me to come back around full circle and come back to him um, you know I was a church organist the whole time but there was not really a relationship there it was more this is what I'm doing I'm playing I'm singing I know that my gifts are from God I'll leave it at that so took a long time but you know one of our friend that we went to visit on Monday night <clears throat> happened to be one of uh, the nuns one of our teachers um, we also she also ran the camp for 50 years and um, so there were about five years in a row or almost five that I spent basically 12, 12 months a year with this woman <laughs> and she was crazy and she made us do crazy things and but one of the things that I'll never forget is she was all out for God like 150 percent all the time she didn't care what kind of a fool she looked like she would approach you she would talk to you um, she really had a heart for children a lot of the kids that came to our camp in the summer that was the only you know God stuff they got um, so it was important to her to just kind of throw out that unconditional love and so that's one thing I was thinking about you know like that formed such 
a strong piece of me. Not just from, what, you know, my family, of course, I, all, the, all the pieces that put us together, but that piece was crazy. Like, I used to go to the convent after school and hang with the nuns. Who does that? Like, really? Uh, I'm not kidding you. And, um, you know, so we had, we had a, a nice relationship, and I think one, they all wanted me to be a nun. And, um, you know, and I, I won't lie to you. I actually, there were a few times I thought about it, especially after I'd break up with a guy. I'd be like, oh, this is for the birds. I'm going to become a nun. <laughs> but, you know, um, it was, I couldn't get over the fact that they gave up their entire lives to go after God and to do what God called them to. It, it just, it still to this day blows my mind. So they really did um, have a big part in, in making me who I am today. And so when we went to see her the other night, it was, it was not good. Um, she had fallen and broken her hip, but she had already had some memory stuff, and then I think the anesthesia made it worse, and she has to be fed. And I mean, she's 85, God bless her. But, you know, she was such so vibrant all the time that when my, uh, my best friend and I went in, we were like, like, okay, don't cry, don't cry. We're like looking at each other, don't cry, don't cry, you know. Um, we had to wear a mask because she's got pneumonia too, so she's on precautions, and you know, so it was hard. I don't, I didn't think at the beginning she even remembered who we were. And um, so anyway, so we just had a short visit. But then when we left, um, they said, oh, you, you know, you can't kiss her cheek, but you can, you know, kiss her hand. So we did. And, you know, we looked right, we were closer to her. We looked right in her eyes and we said bye. And she lit up for a second. And I was like, oh, like that was the old Sards that I knew. And, um, and so it was neat, but you know, we kind of got in the car and it was like, neither of us wanted to talk, you know, it was just like, just mulling over things. And, you know, you can't say that she didn't live a, a long life and she certainly went above and beyond for the Lord, that's for sure. I mean, thousands and thousands of kids heard the gospel from her. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but, you know, it kind of got me thinking and and it was funny because he kind of brought me back to those younger years. And, you know, he said, sorry. He basically said that the reason why I tell everyone I had such a good childhood was because I really did. <laughs> so don't keep like, trying to overthink it and you know that you didn't or what have you but he said the problem was when that shame and guilt came in you basically gave everything to the devil so you gave him your joy you gave him your peace you gave him your confidence in me because I never had trouble with confidence at all growing up and it wasn't boastful and it wasn't arrogant it was just I knew who I was and he had equipped me to do what I needed to do for him but then, again, when I fell off the roof and hit my head, basically, I, I kind of handed it all over to the devil. I mean, he didn't steal it from me. I gave it to him. Not willingly and not really knowing it at the time, but I did. I handed it all over. So he started talking to me about kind of coming back, even though I've already come back. But coming back, it's important to go back to that first true love, to that that stillness, that quietness, where we can just sit and be kids. I mean, why do you think there's all the, you know, references to being childlike? Because we didn't have those worries or concerns or fears and all this junk that gets in the way of us walking out what he wants for us wasn't there when we were kids, you know? And so really calling us back to that childlike relationship with him, where we're just like, daddy, pick me up. That's, that's all I want. I don't need to ask you questions all the time. I don't need answers from you all the time. I just need to be with you. And so it was kind of neat because he, you know, was working through this for, for a few days with me, actually. And, um, and so what was funny and what overlapped was um, a new um, worship album came out, and there was this one song that just kept, I literally was playing it, 30 times a day, if not more. Like I would just hit, you know, just keep repeating it. 
And I couldn't figure out why, and he kind of melded it all together. And um, so Tuesday after the funeral, I was still like, what is all of this? Like, what? There was just so much emotion in it because it was like the funeral and then going to see her and then God talking to me. Like, a very little part of me was like, I am completely overwhelmed right now. Like, God, step away for a minute because I'm going to crash because I just didn't know what to do with all the emotion. And so yesterday I was working and he said, um, after work, you need to go to camp. And I was like, what? I'll go to camp? It's somebody else's property. Like, what am I going to do? So I said, okay. So I finished working. Um, it was just TJ and I, and I said, I'm going to go run, you know, bring dad supper, and I'm going to go run an errand, and I'll be back. So I went to Bristol, and um, I drove to camp, and I got to the house, and I knocked on the door, and uh, my old calculus and algebra teacher answered the door. I'm telling you, she didn't look like she aged a day over. I mean, I've seen her recently, but... She's got to be 80-something years old now, and I'm thinking, you still look like you're 50 when you taught me. Like, this is crazy. Oh, we're eating. Why don't you come in? So I can't, went and sat down with all the nuns, my Portuguese teacher, my algebra teacher, you know, all this. But it was crazy because I said, well, I just wanted, you know, to tell you, I, you know, Colleen and I went and saw Sards, and so we were talking about that, and, and I said, I just... God told me, I was honest, I said, God told me to come here. I said, because, you know, uh, I'm trying to put together a message and I'm trying to work all this out and I've got all this emotion this week and he said, just come here. And I'm like, okay. So she said, it's so funny, you're the third person to come here in four days. And I was like, what? So she tells me these two other people, one I knew, one I didn't know that had been past campers, one was a past student, who felt like God told them to come to the, they call it the Mount, but it was also camp. And she said, it's like, it's like Sards is calling you people home. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it kind of is creepy, but yeah. <laughs> um, because she, when we went to see her, she wasn't even speaking. You know, she couldn't even speak. I think she said one thing was a few words and it didn't make sense. So it was so weird. And so we chatted for a while and, you know, they taught my brothers. Actually, two of them taught my mother and my aunt. So it was, how's the family? They know my nephew. They love Gabe because he loves church. So, you know, and, um, and so we talked, you know, a little about everything and the kids and stuff. And so then I said, all right, well, I'm going to, you know, go for a walk before it gets dark. So I, I literally just walked the property and I sat down at the water and uh, it was so crazy because, you know, sometimes you don't need words. You don't need words to, you don't need to say anything to him and you don't need to hear anything back. Just sometimes that quiet stillness is more powerful than any words you could speak. And so I sat down by the water, and he said to me, it was a little mind-blowing, um, he said, why do you think you love the outdoors and the water so much? And he said, that's because that's where we first met. And I was like, <laughs> of course, I was like a fool crying. Good thing I was all alone. And I was like, that's kind of crazy. But it's completely true because I love the water. I don't like to necessarily go in it. I don't like to go on it on a boat. I get severely ill. <laughs> but I love the water. My husband thinks it's crazy. Well, but you don't want a boat and you don't want to go in it. No, I just want to sit here. And, um, and, I, and I love the outdoors. And actually, most of the songs that I've written, I've written outside. And so I thought it was kind of neat because I think sometimes we need to come back around and go way, 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 way back where we sometimes can't remember anything. <laughs> but he'll bring to mind those important things and that whole point of, I don't know what day it started and what day, I, I don't, and that's not important. It's just going back to 
the beginning with him, that simplicity, that place of stillness where your head's not going 100 miles an hour. I got to say this. No, I forgot to pray for this person. And, I, and that's all good, and he wants that, but sometimes is not the time for that. So it was, it was just, it was an incredible day. And, you know, so he told me, you know, why I love the water and the outside so much. Um, about going back to that childhood innocence again, where everything I say, do, how I walk and talk is all based on him. It has nothing to do with all the rest of the garbage or the, what I should and shouldn't do and how I should do it and all that kind of stuff. And it was neat because when I sat with the nuns, I, told, I thanked them. I said, of course, thanked them while I was crying. And um, I said, you have no idea what you did for me. You just have no idea. Your example, your unconditional love, like your, there's no questions asked. It's just come and be. That was it. That was all they ever asked, you know. And... Um, and so it was nice. I think it was important that they heard that as well. Because, you know, a lot of times what we do in life goes without a thank you. And that's okay. We don't do it for that reason. But I think it was important. And I wanted to also ask my Portuguese teacher if she could change one of my grades that she had given me. She's the only teacher in history of my life that said I cheated on a test. To this day, I will argue with her that I did not. She used to let us correct the test ourselves. So we used to have to switch pens or pencils, and I was putting something down. She thought I was talking to the person behind me. Obviously, I have to let go of that too, but. <laughs> but you know, she's like all of this tall. I'm like, hi, sister, how are you? <laughs> I love her to death, but you know, she used to call us, instead of a bump on a log, <laughs> She got mad at us one day. You're all frogs on logs. And I'm like, where what? Anyway, so the good, the good memories. So again, I just want to read something because I found this when I was going through all of this and I have the passions translation and I loved it. I literally started to cry when I read it last night because in bringing us back, this is what he wants to restore. But the fruit it's Galatians 5, by the way. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. That was enough to me go, what? But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Limitless. Like, that was like, what? I think I read it like five times in a row. I was like, really? That's for us? But it is. Like, it totally is. But sometimes, and I know it was for me, it was drawing back and forgetting about all of this stuff that I have to do and na, 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 and just coming and being with him and it's incredible. So if you can put the slideshow on. So I did this last minute and I really wanted to share it with you guys because of what struck me. So God told me to go to camp. God had me playing a song And I want you to see the first picture is the house. Somewhere. It's quiet. In this house upon the hill You won't mind it Some things you can't know Till you're still In the silence 
Say your spinning thoughts slow down in the stillness. Things have a way of working out. Allow me to introduce myself again. I'm the one that knew you before time began. I've been waiting for you to let me be your friend. Everything you ever need is everything I am. I am. I am. I Take your chances There's nothing here to lose Ask your questions I promise you the truth As you're ready I wanna hear your heart Is it heavy? Where wounds have left a mark Allow me to introduce myself again I was with you every place you've ever been I'm the one that held you when you couldn't stand if you wondering who can heal your brokenness, I can, I can, I can. In the house upon the hill, how I want to show you I am real. Allow me to introduce myself again. Standing and as free as the wind You don't have to reach for me Cause this is where I am I am I am I am I am I am I am
So I thought it was pretty cool that the name of the song was House on a Hill. And that's where he sent me. It was like, what is going on? I'm like, you're freaking me out. No, it was, it was great. And I didn't even dig out. Um, they were like, go do whatever you need to do. Take however long you want. And the, the door to camp was, was open. And um, I didn't put those, those pictures up, but the, no words. that's okay. I like must have a million pictures with her. Um, but I can't, it doesn't work either way. Use the error. Tabrok. I just want to show you something that was kind of neat. And I was down there. Yeah, keep going back a little. No, no. Go, yeah, wrong rocks. Wait, yep. <laughs> this one. We used to we used to sit on these rocks all the times, and then the the boys would go crabbing. My mother would be. My mother would pick us up, and she. All the boys would go crab, and every boy down there. And my mother would be like, "No crabs are coming home with us today." Um, but we used to sit there. If you go to the next picture, this picture it's hard to see, but it was on the wall. She must have three thousand pictures on the walls of every camper that has ever walked in the doors since 1968. Like they they like their wallpaper in the place, so you can't even tell where am I. But click to the next one. What? You skipped one, I think. Yep, but that's me in the pink bathing suit. I was like, oh, I totally know that's me because I used to wear the, those like puka ne necklaces or whatever. But I was like, holy moly. Um, but it was so funny. But there's, there was some with like my brothers. If you, uh, if you go, uh, yeah, go to, go to that one. So in the, I know it's hard to see, but... My two cousins are on this side with my brother. I'm in the back. My other br two brothers are on that side. It was like a family, uh, family affair. But, uh, you know, I think part of the thing, too, was that what he was teaching me was don't not be ashamed, but I guess don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed that your life wasn't a shambles when you were a child. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to have this poor me testimony to do what he wants me to do. That's still a testimony, you know? And so, and the, but the devil's always tried to get in and, and change that in my head. Oh, well, there must be something you missed. There's something you're suppressing. There's something that's, that was wrong. You know what I mean? As if to say everybody has a rotten childhood. But it's true because I did kind of, ga I gave it all to him. I, I got to this point and I was just, and that was wrong, but I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I didn't intentionally give him anything, but like I said, he didn't even have to steal it. He kind of just, oh, here you go. Because I don't know how to do this now that I screwed up was basically what it came down to. So I love that he brought me full circle and that he had that song and it was just like, I was just like, what? And um, so I think, you know, if anything, I would just say, let's stop giving the devil everything or pieces of things because he can only take what you give him. So don't give him anything. End of story. Because he really has... He's taken so much from us, even something as simple as joy. Like, don't look like you're having a good time, sister, because that's not good. We're in church. Be, behave. You know what I mean? Yes. Be pious. Thank you. Um, and it just, I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work because it's not real. You know what I mean? And that's not who God was either. You know, I see Jesus kind of walking around and he's, you know, 
going from town to town and he's stirring things up and I think he was having a good time with it. I don't think he was like, oh, I don't think they like me here. I'm just going to leave. Heal you. I'll heal you. I'll heal you while I'm leaving. No, he stopped and talked to people, right? He had a good time. Dude, because he knew who he was, right? Right? So it's about time that you all know who you are, right? We got that. All right, let's close. Lord, we just thank you for meeting us right where we're at, for always knowing just what we need and just how we need it. I thank you that you put all, pe all these pieces together, Lord, that you just, you know, you've known us since before we were even formed and you had, the, had it all laid out already. And Lord, we just uh, pray that we can walk closely with you and accomplish all that you have for us. We just thank you for your great love, for all those abundant blessings that you give us, Lord. We just thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.